Hello and welcome to Wake and Jake. Myself, Jake Storielli, big baby David, and it's a total eclipse of the heart today. Uh, eclipse season. We're actually we're recording this right beforehand. So if the world ends, maybe this is like the last piece of content posted. Um, I could see the world not ending though, because we did an eclipse in 2017. There was just not nearly as much hype on it. Or is the path better this time? Everyone says the it's path be is darker. better this time. We're we're closer to that. Um, I recall there being some hype last time. I was in college though, so there. Was, yeah, um, I am googling 2017 eclipse path. Okay, so it was it was a little further north. It was like Oregon and diagonally down. Um, and there were some hot spots. I don't. I was living in Denver in the time. There was a picture of me. Um, I smoked a cigarette. I thought it'd be funny. It'd be my eclipse thing. So now I'm debating, do I have to do that again? Anyways, uh, I want to do some team most surprising stats of the MLB season so far. Uh, maybe I'll talk a little college basketball with you. WrestleMania? Not really. Although I did like seeing people's tweets about it and how excited they were. Uh, I'm just not in that world. Um, I feel like I know a lot of people who... I don't know they're in that world until they like, right. present that to me. WrestleMania, like, oh, okay. you, look, you look at the timeline and you're like, damn. I, I, I love people, people having their in. thing. I mean, McAfee, dude, he crushes football in WWE. He's got like everything covered. Um, I want to do some MLB. Uh, most alarming, surprising, exciting stats of the young baseball season. And I'll segue into it because uh, the most alarming stat is something we opened... Uh, Major League Baseball with, and it's how many guys are getting Tommy John slash injured. Uh, I reached out to Eno Saris, I reached out to Jeff Passan, and we talked about it a lot on Talking Baseball. <laughs> the problem is there's no solution. Um, and Passan just posted an article, and he mentions how in 48 hours, Yuri Perez, Shane Bieber, and Spencer Strider all went down. Um, it's insane, and I think it's for baseball – it's kind of the new most pressing problem. Like the pitch clock happened. And whether or not you believe game time or pitch clock was a problem, it was one of the most discussed things in baseball for years uh, that the game's getting too long, blah, blah, blah. Pitch clock ki- came in and was kind of successful, although uh, MLBPA will tell you it's part of the problem with these injuries, which uh, I don't fully believe in. Uh, I think... My maximum percentage I could give the pitch clock for these pitching injuries is like 2%. Uh, Sure, there's more reps in a closer period of time, but if you go back and you watch old baseball games, that was the whole thing. I mean, the pitcher Mm -hmm. got the ball and threw it back in the day. Like, they didn't shake off signs. It it just happened. The game was moving. Um, Not to say there weren't pitchers that took breaks and things like that. And, again, I'm always open to adaptation when – when these first, when the pitch clock first got announced, I said, "Hey, let's see it," and I, I just want to see more of it and let's adjust because when it first happened, I was a little panicky. Uh, some baseball games were going by like too quick, and I had to check myself a little bit because a chunk of that was also the Yankees' offense that they were atrocious last mm-hmm. year. That innings were flying by, innings were flying by, and I was like, "I don't love this." There are a lot of games so far this year watching primarily Yankees that I'm like, oh, these games feel much longer. They're on a little bit of a more normal timeline, isn't that crazy? Oh, oh, you guys rally now? (laughs) Yeah. So that that was a little bit of a Yankee problem last year. Uh, The other thing was it took the hitters two weeks to figure out to use their times at the plate, Uh, and you see it now. Almost every at bat, a hitter will use their their time call. Uh, Usually, a lot of them, if they get two strikes, if there's a three-two count. Uh, some will do it just to like start the at bat. I, I know. I think Soto came up the other day, and I think one of the players was, was arguing with the umpire still. I think Glaber and Angel Hernandez, and there was a little bit of a scene, and I think the pitch clock kind of started. So Soto just used his time. He's like, "Hey, let's. I'm not getting started on this note. Like, let's reset." So maybe there's something. Maybe the pitchers need that. Uh, that you know, if there's a two zero count. And you need to catch your breath for a second. You just made a play covering first. You can call time, circle the mound, 30 seconds, whatever it is. I don't know. I'm I'm very open to more adaptations. 
Uh, the MLBPA came back and said that the pitch clock was a big reason for it. There's no data behind that. Uh, Eno Saris, who works with data, he said that. Uh, the thing that does correlate with this is the pitching injuries. Uh, and we're we're trying to brainstorm solutions, but there's not much there. I mean, even Passon just came out in his article and said basically he doesn't have an answer. Uh, like, he's basically begging pitchers, <laughs> like the veteran pitchers, to come out and tell guys, like, hey, stop throwing with velo. Let me know how that goes. Have Be a young pitcher and have Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer telling you, hey, don't try to throw as hard. Those guys stayed in the league for so long, partially because of how hard they throw, and they still throw. Um, I don't know. There's not a solution soon. Kids are getting hurt at an alarming rate. Uh, That is a crazy no, no, no good problem that I don't know what you do because kids are going to try to throw harder to get recruited, to get scouted, to play college ball, to try to play pro ball. Um, that right now, I mean, the best solution that I think I've heard, um, and these start to get into crazy rules. Like, these are crazy game-changing rules that the pitch clock on paper, we were like, this really isn't going to change the game. Mm -hmm. Like, this is just going to change, like, you know, the relievers that were taking 50 seconds between pitches and throwing over to first all the time. End of the day, that was nonsense time in baseball. Just complete nonsense. Uh, So the fact that most of it got cut out, that's good. It was a good thing, but it still felt like a drastic change to the game itself. This, we're talking about changing rule rules. We're talking about the amount of pitchers you can carry. We're talking about, um, you know, the, the one that, again, smart people keep stumbling into is the you lose your DH when the starting pitcher comes out of the game. Um, I kind of love that one, but there's still problems because I've been doing, and now I'm full-blown in this. I didn't think I was going to get this far. Um, I have fully pivoted to the game needs starting pitching again, Uh, and I know everyone's done that. Like That's not a new thought, Uh, but I kind of realized it, and I forget if I did this, Uh, But when I was watching uh, Iowa, the women's Final Four, Paige Beckers, UConn, you know the Husky brand, and if you're in that world or have been around that world, you know know Paige. Um, Kaylin Clark, Iowa, like if you hadn't heard of her, you've been under a rock. My Jessica, who doesn't get deep in sports, talking about Kaylin Clark. The sports world was talking about Kaylin Clark. South Carolina, I mean, they're kind of the the dominant team. Um, and then NC State made it for the ladies, so that's good for them. But the marquee matchup before the final was UConn, Paige, Iowa, Caitlin Clark, and it was, you know, the most viewed women's game ever, et cetera, et cetera. And for me, it came down to the concept. It's where basketball has always won and baseball's always gotten hurt. Paige was going to have the ball a lot of the time. Almost every time UConn brought the ball up the court, they were going to look for Paige. Iowa's whole offense is get it to Kalen Clark or be creative enough around Kalen Clark to get a bucket somewhere else. They were stars, and stars always play. Look at Kobayashi in the hot dog eating contest. Like, if there's a star, we'll find you, and we're going to be interested. Uh, Where baseball gets hurt, Aaron Judge, Mookie Betts, um, Seeger, who, whoever it is. You're going to see them in their four at-bats. Who knows at what part of the game that's going to be. You know, it could be leading off an inning, nobody on. It could be two outs, nobody on. Like, you know, Judge has been getting walked a lot recently because they needed to see if Rizzo and Stan can protect him. I think Judge is leading baseball in walks. So think about that product. <laughs> the, the guy that a chunk of the building is there to see. The guy that the Oakland A's owner is talking about hitting home runs against his team. That's another one for another time. Uh, you could show up to the ballpark and that guy gets walked. Two of his four at-bats. So during your three-hour game, 
you're getting to see Judge actually take two at bats. It's where baseball gets hurt. Where baseball used to have it, and I think is going to come back at some day, because the fact we're talking about it this much means there's going to be a solution, it's starting pitchers. Like, that used to be the whole thing, man. I mean, Maddox versus Cone. Um, trying to think of Josh Beckett versus El Duque, kind of making up names and matchups. Even though those guys weren't necessarily the star of that game, they were the beginning ticket. You knew you were going to see Greg Maddox with the ball into the sixth inning. Um, you, you knew you were going to see those guys, and they were a big part of the appeal. So that's when a big pitching matchup happened. Whoa. That was the, like... Man, Schilling and Johnson, like, you know, some of these guys that came through, and we still have big-name pitchers, but A, are we keeping them healthy, and B, are we getting them Are we getting them in the postseason? I, I remember the Braves a couple years ago, they were doing some opener stuff just to survive. Um, that I don't know. I The starting pitcher is going to come back. It feels like it was coming back because teams were burning out their bullpen last year. We saw pitchers going deeper because teams were burning out their bullpen. The new problem is it's velo, and these guys throw as hard as they possibly can because that's how you get noticed. There is a correlation with the harder you throw, the harder it is to hit. Trevor had a great point uh, where he was like, well, why aren't hitting numbers going down? Like normal OPS and stuff is kind of staying the same. So maybe this velo isn't helping pitchers a ton, and you need to locate it to be good. Um, like they'll, like teams will call up the guys who hit velo better. That's, right, that's what they've done. So I'm, I don't know the next steps, and it's going to be a process because you need to shake the thought process of now kids that are ten years out trying to make major league baseball, and the best way for them to do that is to throw harder and throw nastier and spin it more. That's where, for a little bit, I was dreaming of a a speed limit. Like, what would you make it? 96? 98? 100? Does that stop anyone? Like, how many that's, players... There's does... still plenty of guys who, who can't reach 100. Right. They're still maxing out. It's the maxing out that's a problem. And that just doesn't work with sports, because the whole idea of sport is we want to see guys do it at the highest level. So if you can throw hard... We want to see that. Uh, I guess the thing is clearly we've gotten far. We have gotten further away from guys trying to pitch innings. The whole original Blake Snell getting pulled and starting pitchers not going three times through a lineup because they got hit more. Well, there's some hitting action. Uh, you know, I know baseball was looking for more of that, more hitting, more base running. Uh I don't know. I, I do think the answer lies between shortening pitching staffs, which means you need more pitchers stretched out and ready to go on a given day, uh, and then maybe something as nutty as lo- losing the DH when you pull your starting pitcher because then length gets valued even more. I don't know the solution. I don't think anyone knows a solution. And right now, any anytime you search for one, there's more of a problem because like I said with that speed limit, you know, if you're one of the guys that can throw 100 – you're probably going to work on throwing your slider at 94. And, again, not a doctor chiming in, but I don't think that's good for your elbow. Uh, So I don't know. This is the new story in baseball. Hopefully we're going to get more updates in soon, and that's kind of what Jeff Passan's article is, like, begging. Like, MLB and MLBPA and MLB are already using this as a negotiating chip, as a... You know, MLBPA coming out with the pitch clock was a horrible first move, and that's just honest because they're trying to negotiate on it, basically. And they're they're upset that they're able to put this rule in with that or right. add to the rule without more approval and and all, and, all that. and and I, like truthfully, I'm I'm sure the pitch clock is a factor. Like and, it, it's all of these things. And Trev, but, Trev noted, you know, it's not like Tony Clark acted alone. Like players. Apparently don't love the pitch clock. Otherwise, they wouldn't just be throwing that out there. Uh, And probably pitchers in particularly, or at least what degree the pitch clock is at. So, um, I don't know, man. To to try to get pitchers to not throw as hard as they can, you know, there's just a couple ideologies, like how much strikeouts are valued from pitchers. Um, You know, those three true outcome results that, you know, we, we were laughing at Mike Timlin's uh, baseball card the other day 
because Mike Timlin had a nasty long career. Mike Timlin used to bang sinkers in the zone, man. Uh, Mike Timlin was also really good, so I don't want to pretend he was just this um, just old guy vagabond. But, you know, the, coming the out... strikeout of, numbers are just not... Yeah, they're... It, it's less than a strikeout... Less than a strikeout per inning. They're strikeout numbers from a different era because, you know, he would throw that ball in there and hope they kind of hit it where his defense was. Um, so, I, I don't know. I feel like baseball... I don't know the next steps. Um, you know, we the shift was a big one, and we kind of addressed that kind of properly. I still have, I don't want to say issues. Um, there's t- going to be tweaks to that at some point, too. Man, I still get driven nuts. Sometimes there's a ball just roped in the gap, and the outfielder's right there. Just right there. And it's like this, I don't think that's necessarily a good product. Uh, I guess what I'm saying is we're always constantly working on the game we love. Uh, and I'm interested to see the next steps because, uh, man, baseball needs it. And if you shorten pitching staffs, man, I can't even imagine. Dude, teams navigate their bullpen so tight. At the end of each series, like teams are just surviving. And it's like, well, these three guys need to pitch today. I don't know. It's a really weird formula. Um, and I guess I'm, I'm excited for when the answer does come in two, four, five, ten years. Uh, but right now we're in a weird spot with it. What's like, we talked about it on the, on the other episode too, and and alluded to some of it because it's, uh, what's like the crisis is at like the youth level. Like even if they put in some change tomorrow, right? That's eight, ten years until like the MLB problem is fixed. And let's say we we daydreamed a little bit about, you know, if you're going to be a guy in a bullpen, you need to throw, be able to throw at least three innings. I mean, maybe it's more than that. But think about all the pitchers that have turned to becoming a reliever. Like, relievers become a good career path for guys. If you can throw one lights out inning, uh, I think that needs to change. And I, I'm not going to give myself credit for this, there's just too many flamethrowers coming out of the pen that I don't think that's a good product either. Like, when you turn on a game and it's just, here's a new guy that throws 98, and then that goes back to Mookie Betts, Aaron Judge, whoever your star player is, they're now seeing a couple freak shows out of the bullpen for half of their at-bats that, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's led to a better product, uh, and more importantly, we need to be keeping guys healthier. So, uh I'm interested to see the next steps. I'm not sure what they'll be. Uh, all right, I wanted to do, again, most uh, most surprising stats from the MLB season. We are, depending your team, we're 7 to 12 games in. Uh, which, I mean, 12 games. BBD, you're my math guy. That's not, what's that, 8%? Sure. 7% so It's games. under 10. It's a little high and tight. Uh, So I didn't even want to do players either because to to come at a player for a a week-and-a-half sample size or a two-week sample size... Every player has had an 0 for 10 games. I was looking at the player set. I mean, Tyler O'Neill currently leads in OPS with a 1.4 over nine games. And it's like, hey, we do do talking baseball regularly. Like, I I see that. (laughs) I see that stat line a lot. Uh, So I wanted to look at the teams and see where there's... uh, some red, yellow, or green flags. Let's start off with the good. Offensively. BBD, do you know the Braves team batting average? Can't say I do. I would I would guess it's very high. They're hitting 300 as a team. Disgusting. They're hitting 300 as a team. 354 OPS. It's an 886 OPS. Second place in OPS is your Texas Rangers. The Los Angeles Dodgers, both in the eights. Uh, And then how about the Milwaukee Brewers and Chicago Cubs? Uh, Chicago Chicago Cubbies, man. They're trying to turn heads. Uh, And the Brewers, some of their young guys are clicking right now, which is seemingly changing their their season outlook. Uh, A little more on the Atlanta Braves. If you search by on base percentage, uh, the Cubs and Rangers are tied. Like that. Good for them. 
Uh, the Dodgers are a step down at 358. The Atlanta Braves are getting on base at a 354 clip. Um, that's good for fourth place there between the Dodgers and the Pirates. The NL Central, man. I'm telling you, the Centrals have more juice this year. And I am very much here for it. Here is the difference. The Pittsburgh Pirates team slugging, 402. That's good to put them tied for 11th. Okay, Pirates. Their offense has been off to a nice start. The Pittsburgh Pirates, who have the 5th place OBP, the 11th place slugging, the Atlanta Braves above them are slugging 130 points higher. A 532 slug out of the Braves. That is the highest in baseball, and it's the highest in baseball by 82 points. We talked a lot about the Dodgers this offseason. A lot about the Dodgers. A lot about a lot of teams. We didn't talk a ton about the Braves, and I know they just lost Strider. They're hitting, and they did this last year. And maybe that's why we're not talking about it a ton. Uh, but even with Sean Murphy out, they have Darno, who he jumped in. He had a game-winning hit the other day. Ozuna is going nuts again. Matt Olson, yep. Riley, Albies, Michael Harris, too. Ronnie hasn't even kind of kind of hit his full stride yet. The Atlanta Braves, I know it's known, but right now it's at such a different level. And, hey, I, I always try to get into the athlete mentality. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny with my body type. If I was on the Atlanta Braves, we had this historic offense season. Remember, do you remember how hyped Peter Moylan was for the Braves? Mm. Didn't he make his like background of his phone the lineup homers call, and OPS or something? Or call something like, like that. Peter Moylan was pretty sure he was watching one of the more special teams he's ever seen. They get bounced from the playoffs and it's over. If I was on a team like that. The offseason would drive me clinically insane. And by the time real baseball came back, I think they'd be putting up the same number these these Atlanta Braves have been doing. So uh, just something to think about. The, the Braves are still on a different level. They have the most doubles in baseball so far by five. Um, and they've only played eight games, while some of these teams have played 12. Um. And they are uh, third in home runs, again, having played less games than the Royals, Astros, and Dodgers. And how about the Royals? That was Trevor Plouffe's fun fact he dropped today. The Kansas City Royals, currently T2 in homers. Uh, MJ Melendez had a big weekend. Uh, the team stats are around average, but with the way they've been pitching, which I think we'll get to that in a minute, uh, again... We can be tough on the Centrals. We've shown that, and we will be. The Centrals are better this year. I don't know what it means yet. I can't get fully hype about a Royal sweeping the Chicago White Sox, who are, in the world words of a famous Twitter video, ass. <laughs> but the product in the Central Division, AL and NL, is a lot better this year. Um, let me see what other offensive stats... Stand out. The Pirates, I gave you their OBP speech. They have the most walks in baseball. Again, more than the Dodgers having played two less games. So the Pirates have something going on uh, on that end of the field. Stolen bases is just maybe a fun thing to look at uh, on your own time. On your own time. This is your own time. That's what we're doing here. There's one team in Major League Baseball that does not have a stolen base, BBD. Mm, Red Sox San Francisco Giants Okay. San, San Francisco Giants are 0 for 2 2 caught stealings Toronto Blue Jays only have 1 And that's um. I don't know There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 5 teams with 2 stolen bases I guess the reason why I said to search it out On your own time is basically There are teams There are teams that are stealing and then there's kind of teams that just do not care. Um, 
our Yanks, it's I think first like almost full week they really didn't go and then they've since kind of turned it on and been going so maybe and that's a, i mean maybe that's you, an ideological like uh, first week let's ease in still a week and a half if you yeah. run into the the right or wrong catcher depending their pop time and your sure. your stolen base guy gets on uh i just think it's funny the cincinnati reds have 18 the brewers have 16 <laughs> nl central hey. people um nat 16 rays 14 um and, yeah, just to compare, you know, the feel of 14-plus stolen bases to the comparison of two stolen bases, and this is a hodgepodge of teams, those same Braves I mentioned. So they're doing everything else, so it's okay. Cubbies, off to a nice start. They're fine. White Sox and eh. Twins, up against it. They've only played seven games. Cardinals have always felt old, but mostly they're pitching. And the Blue Jays, that, that was a surprising one for me. You know, would you want to guess who the only Blue Jay Steel is? Only Blue Jay Steel. Give me IKF. I was hoping you would say it's IKF. It is 34 year old Kevin Kiermeyer. Wow. Um, so I want to do a little bit of the bad on the offense uh, before we jump over to the pitching. Your worst OPS in baseball, BBD, is? Mm, White Sox still. White Sox are number two. To the New York Mets. Ah. Mets have gone off to an awful start with the bats. Uh, Lindor was in a horrible funk. It looks like he might have just popped out of that. Uh, nine games. Expect the Mets to hit. Explains their slow start just a little bit more. Um, and, but, I know, like, going into this series, it was, like, him, Nemo, and McNeil. Oh, were, yeah. They were, like, combined three for... 40 years. They were in the bad place in a bad way. Yeah. When you have three guys doing that that are supposed to be three of your best hitters. Right. That'll hurt. That is a bad time. The Mendoza line is po- is popular in baseball. It's uh, you know, hitting over or under 200. It used to not be super prevalent, but when three true outcomes came back, the Mendoza line kind of came back in a big way and people also stopped caring about it because hitters stopped caring about it as much. And uh, those hits are home. Or used to be a lot of... If you were near the Mendoza line and someone said that in a broadcast, it was like, whoa, this this guy's got to do something quick or he's not going to be playing it's baseball. A bad time. Uh, my offensive Mendoza line for this early part of the season will be the Oakland Athletics. They've become a little bit of a goof around baseball. For obvious reasons, mostly their owner. The Oakland A's are 23rd in OPS. OPS isn't everything, but it's something. It's a good, it's a decent all-encompassing stat. Uh, Good starting point. Like any stat, you need to dive more to find uh, the rest of the story. The Oakland Athletics are 23rd in OPS to start this baseball season. Behind them. The Toronto Blue Jays. The Toronto Blue Jays. That they're waiting for an update on Kevin Gossman, who his velo was down on the mound. Hope he's okay. Right now they have Romano and Swanson hurt in their bullpen, which I like their depth. Manoa just got rocked in uh, AAA, I think it was. Um, the Toronto Blue Jays that were supposed to be kind of this hit- hitting dynasty, hitting team. The top of their lineup is all righty. And I don't know how scary it is anymore. Uh, Let's see where George Springer lands this year. His last season wasn't super impressive. I'm not going to be out on George Springer until it's out. Go Huskies tonight in a big way. Um, Vladdy and Bichette, I mean, those two can hit. It's how much and what else are you getting everywhere else? And the rest of that Blue Jays lineup, everyone feels the same. Ernie Clement, IKF, Biggio, Kiermaier. I, I know they're all different ball players, but there's not a lot of fear factor at the bottom of that lineup. And Jimmy was thinking the same thing, and he was scared to say it because Toronto people can be some of the loudest on the internet. Toronto, there's some red flags up right now, especially if the Red Sox are something. I don't know. Something to watch out for. Below them are the Detroit Tigers. 
A lot of people were drinking Tiger Kool-Aid before the season. Uh, 623 OPS. Let's see if they get anything going. Miami Marlins, below them. Uh, one in nine. One in nine from the Marlins. We're about to watch them with the Yankees. Um, I don't know, man, with Yuri Perez going down, uh, traded John Birdie before the season. Not that that was probably going to be the difference maker in their season. In the starting lineup this evening. Man, when we did when we did the Marlins TPP, all of us kind of looked around like, all right, I know these Marlins haven't been exciting for the past little while. But they made the playoffs last year. Same record as the Snakes. Their pitching staff is always exciting. You want to love Jazz Chisholm. Jake Berger went over, moved the needle. Arias was awesome for a chunk of the season. When we did their team profile and projection, we all kind of looked at each other like, I'm not seeing it at all. Um, and I know they still have some pitching. Lazardo's a high velo guy. Like, he's... He was on the list Eno tweeted, so what? I don't know. You don't, not wishing anything upon anyone, but those Velo guys are, are dropping like flies. Uh, the Marlins ain't hitting, uh, and they've lost a chunk of ball games, and it's going to be hard to get the juju going in the right direction down there. Trevor Plouffe's Minnesota Twins have not been hitting. One of the guys that was supposed to be a big part of their hitting this year, Royce Lewis, out for a chunk of time. We talked about Correa before the season. Big year coming for him, man. His last year was ugly. If Carlos Correa trends on that path, I don't know. That that Twins lineup starts to look a lot different. It's seven games. They've played the least games. Seven games. You could have a bad week, not ruling them out of anything. Still the most talented team in the AL Central, I believe. Mentioned the Mets at the bottom. The White Sox were the team above them. Mm-hmm. Uh, both of their those teams' hopes are are sailing away a little bit. The third team that has an OPS that starts with a five to start off this baseball season is Seattle Mariners. And I I did it a little bit in the recap today. They haven't won a series yet. Um. I don't I guess Seattle help me help you a little bit. I I don't know. Um does it feel like the lineup's not clicking? I've talked a lot about the Julio April stuff and the Julio first half stuff and I don't want to believe it. Uh I guess what's going on there because the other thing and Mariners fans got mad at me when I was angry uh that Teoscar left and Eugenio got traded away from them. They said, dude, too many strikeouts. The Seattle Mariners are tied for third in strikeouts, uh, and one of the teams above them is the Los Angeles Dodgers, who have played two more games. Um, and they, so if you took out the Dodgers, they are one strikeout below the Pittsburgh Pirates, who are just seeing pitches, apparently. Walker strikeout in Pittsburgh. Um, hmm. So Seattle Mariners, I uh, hey, like I said with the Twins, hopefully it's a blip, hopefully it's a 10-game blip. But that offense that I didn't like their offseason, and then I convinced myself a little bit because there's, there's balance there. Whoa! <laughs> Go click on Seattle's uh, roster resource right now. Mm-hmm. Um, their lineup is J.P. Crawford at the top, lefty. Uh, Julio. Polanco third, who, again, I like Jorge Polanco, but, I don't know, I like Jorge Polanco a lot more fifth or sixth. I about to say fifth would feel better than third. And Mitch Haniger, who I think has been their best hitter so far this season, mm-hmm. clean up. Mitch Garver, who, remember, that was... That contract was a value play. Mitch Garver is 33. He had a good year DHing for half the season. He hasn't played a lot of full seasons, but it looked like he's hitting. Um, he hasn't been so far, but let's see what that looks like. And then Cal Rally switch now, and then I laughed because it has the bottom of their lineup as three straight lefties, Rayleigh, Canzone, and Rojas, uh, which, by the way, 
I don't I don't necessarily know what efforts you're going to begin from those guys. Yeah, they they lost Ty France in the seven games he did hit. It was going pretty well. Paternity but, list. Congrats, Ty. Yeah, for so for a few days that roster looks a little different, but they uh Seattle is going to Toronto, which that's going to be a little bit of a desperation ball. Let's see what that looks like uh by the end of this week. Uh, and then Seattle comes back home for Chicago and Cincinnati. So, um I don't know. Uh, I don't know, Seattle. I, I guess let me know. It, it can't feel good. Um, are they just, is it tough at bats? Is there is there something else going on? Because uh, right now, that's a little bit alarming. On the pitching side of the ball, it starts with the Boston Red Sox. I did not have that on my bingo card, and neither did you. And I listened to a couple of my Red Sox fans, and I tried to be as fair as possible about it. Um, and I can almost run through this speech very naturally because I've done it a few times. Brian Bayo, the, the jump is going to come. Is it now? Is it next year? Is it mid this year? It's coming. Bayo's problem was lefties. He has a changeup. It's all going to come together. I think he's been the worst starting pitcher for them so far. Cutter Crawford had a sneaky good year last year. Run that through the pipeline a bunch of times. Pavetta supposedly had the best stuff plus this preseason, which, again, my guy Eno Saris, that's kind of what he swears by. He's going Whitlock and Houck. I mean, are those two brothers? Both ages listed 27.8. Both looked like they were on a path for the bullpen. Uh, both of them have been lights out this year. Uh, so the Boston Red Sox, you knew they had a bit of a bullpen. Kenley Jansen and Chris Martin, I mean, that's a that's rock solid. And Justin Slayton has been shoving for them. Good. Um, I mentioned the Toronto Blue Jays not hitting. If the Boston Red Sox, they're probably not going to pitch to the tune of a one four nine ERA. You know, it's going to be one of those things we find out. The Boston Red Sox played Seattle. Earlier this year, how much did that help their pitching stats? Or was it, is that what's hurting the Mariners? The Cleveland Guardians also played those Seattle Mariners. They have the second best ERA in baseball. I think both those teams did Seattle and Oakland. So let's see what that feels like a little later in the year. And then your third place teams, and one of the stats that has turned heads a little bit, the Kansas City Royals. A two five three team ERA. Uh, their starting rotation has shoved. They retooled their whole bullpen. I don't know what it means for 162. I just know there is a lot more talent in the Central Divisions. He keeps beating the same drum. Mm -hmm. And if Cole Reagans is a guy, which there were scouts calling him Lefty Degrom in spring training, had a massive year last year. Seth Lugo and Michael Waka, both of them had really good years as part of that Padres pitching staff. Brady Singer was the wild card for me. Um, he looks, he's always looked like he's had the arm talent. He's a first round pick. He broke out, but then he kind of got broke in last year. He has been pitching phenomenally. And Alec Marsh, 25 years old, giving them a good effort. Uh, my big thing coming into the season was like, you can't have Jordan Lyles start. I've seen a lot of Jordan Lyles stat pages. You can't have Jordan Lyles in a starting rotation for you. And then... Let him spot start a little bit. I think I did laugh, and I think I texted this to Jeff Passan while ta talking about arm stuff, and I said, I can't, I can't believe I'm asking for more Jordan Lyles in baseball. Because I think, I think guys like Jordan Lyles in a bullpen is part of the solution. I really do. Um, I'm not saying you have to get hit like Jordan has sometimes. Um, the uh, the Royals you you mentioned a a two five three team ERA something like that. Uh, just the starting rotation is in the is a one six. Red Sox are ahead of them one five three. Uh, from just the rotation, the ERA plus is obviously each guy only has two starts, so you're gonna get silly numbers. But I've been laughing at it kind of all day. The ERA plus is going down the list. Brady Singer five eight three. Seth Lugo five five four. Reagan's two seventy. 
Waka 175 and Alec Marsh uh, 128. I can so see they're all they're all they're all performing significantly above average through two starts apiece. Could see that flattening out a little bit. Um, but yeah, man, uh, the Mets have been pitching really well. Let's let's see how that develops and manifests for them. Uh, on the bottom of the list, oh my god, one of my buddies sent me a graphic today, and he was trying to sp- send it for sports gambling reasons. And this isn't rocket scientists, rocket science. He said, bet the over on Rockies games. Colorado Rockies have a 7-5 ERA. 7-5, people. Right above them, the Los Angeles Angels. Insert joke here. Above them is the Nationals. Sure, that might not shock you. The next three teams will... That was a really dramatic delivery. Uh, the Toronto Blue Jays, five four six ERA. Bassett's gotten hit a couple times. Toronto, bottom five pitching, bottom five hitting so far. Let's hope that's a weird 10-game sample. The Tampa Bay Rays with a 5-2-4 early on. Um, and then it's Giants, Marlins, and Mariners. So Mariners have had a bottom seven offense. Uh, or excuse me, bottom seven pitching, bottom seven offense, uh, and the Blue Jays are bottom five both ways too. So I'm hoping for both of these teams. It's a little bit of way too early, and we get to look back at this and laugh. ERA, not always the best indicator. I get that. Um, Let's see. The Chicago Cubs, man, watch out. Their ERA is middle of the pack. They're striking out people. The whip's a little high. Uh, Orioles deserve a shout out too when talking pitching. Two eight five ERA, and we never respect the Orioles pitching. Uh, it's just a weird thing we do as baseball fans. Maybe it's the field, maybe it's the name power, um, but the birds are back at it. So, uh, my conclusion, as always, respect the Central a little more. Red Sox are officially on this season's radar. It's early, but West Coast trip to go 7-3 and three is massive. They're about to start a homestand. Like, if the Red Sox have a good homestand, they're going to be in it till end of May. <laughs> like, that's how baseball works. You're, like, locked into a... You fully had a good April already. If the, if the Red Sox have a... Let's go look at their schedule. And I'll try to be realistic or not realistic. They've got... Assuming it's three versus Cleveland. They have Baltimore, L.A., and Cleveland. Let's say they take two out of three from Baltimore. They're hot. Opening day. Baston. Bayo on the bump. Bayo and Burns? Whoo! I might watch. Probably won't. Uh, Pavetta, Irwin, Cutter, and Grayrod. Let's say they get two out of three. They're hot. Sure. Orioles are good. They're pitching. Angels come to town. How about this? Let's call them. Let's call it four for six. Whether you're sweeping the halos, uh, and you're only getting one against Baltimore, or you're going two and two, and then Cleveland comes to Boston, and let's just say it's another another two for three. Sure. Uh, Cleveland is a four gamer. Okay, so it's a four gamer. So let's let's just say two for four, just to be even conservative with it. Uh, so we win four out of six. We win uh, six out of ten. Let's go the seven out of ten. Four. Okay. They're hot. That's what they just did. Find a way to not lose any of these. If the Red Sox run it back, a home stand. Angels are very winnable games. The other two may not be, but it's baseball. If the Boston Red Sox are sitting at 14 and six, they're at least a part of the season through mid to late May. Um, and I don't know, they, they've still, they have their issues. Trevor Story got hurt again. Tyler O'Neill's probably not going to stay at the 1.4 pace. We saw Duvall do that a little bit last year. Um, Duran, one of my buddies called him an A's merchant. I'm not doing that. Um, Devers hasn't gone yet, though. Like, Yoshida hasn't gone yet. Casas hasn't gone yet. Uh, they, yeah, I guess 
Red Sox are trending this way. Blue Jays are trending this way. And if one of them doesn't flatten out sooner, we got to kind of reevaluate the whole AL East this year. So that's a lot of evaluation for some teams that are nine games in. Uh, but it's what we have so far. Uh, interested to see what we have for you this Wednesday. I honestly haven't thought about it yet. Because go Huskies, people. Go watch tonight. Uh, I think they're one of the best, if not the best, college basketball team of all time. Depends what they do tonight. If they lose, they're definitely not. Hmm. Um, I think they're going to win in impressive fashion. Uh, They've been waiting for this for so long. They're so talented. They have the perfect... The perfect balance of guys back for a repeat season that roles increased and guys that weren't around for the championship that will be trying to get it for the first time. Uh, I'm obviously a little too close to the situation. I love UConn. They've always been kind of a 1A with the Yankees for me. My dad went to UConn. They're, I'm a Connecticut sports guy. They're Connecticut sports team. Um I don't know. I I think they're going to roll. The women's college basketball was awesome this weekend. I hope you check some of that out uh, and you're not just kind of boomering. Well, women's basketball, what are we doing here? Uh, Great product, great stars, fun games. Um, Was there anything else sports this weekend? There always is. Earthquake and Eclipse, wow. Uh, And Masters this weekend. So... When sports kicks into gear, man, it gets pretty good. It gets pretty good. So NBA playoffs soon. Yeah, NBA, man. NBA is going to be real in a minute. Um, go Huskies tonight. Uh, we will see you in the midweek episode. Uh, hope everyone survived the eclipse and is still seeing this. Goodbye. <laughs>